Saul Williams is an acclaimed poet, hip hop musician, producer, actor, and director. He has performed from the White House to the Louvre and all around the world. He has collaborated with artists ranging from Nas and Erica Badu to Allen Ginsberg and Tanya Tegak. Saul first made his mark at Sundance 25 years ago, playing Ray in the independent film Slam, which won the Sundance Grand Jury Prize that year. His music crosses the genres of hip hop, punk, acid house, and rock, and is charged with social and political commentary. And last year, he made his film de directorial debut with Neptune Frost, which I saw, a wild, wild, and exhilarating futuristic musical uh, which gained wide acclaim and revealed yet another size to his amazing artistry. Put your hands together for the great Saul Williams. Can sit, sit in the middle there. Uh, Momolu S.K. Stewart also appeared. He also appeared in the film with Saul in Slam. He's an activist, a visual artist, an author, fashion designer, and rap artist. He grew up surrounded by violence and was profoundly impacted when his mother murdered his father when he was only six years old. When Momolu was 16, he committed a murder himself and was sentenced to two life sentences plus 75 years. But through the help of Kim Kardashian and other political activists, he is now home, saving lives in the community where he took a life in his youth. Please welcome Momolu S.K. Stewart. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. All right, we're, we're just going to spend a few minutes talking about this film, and then uh, these guys are going to perform. Um, so Saul, for those who are not familiar with the story of Slam, what was it about? Uh, well, Slam is the story of, uh, of a young man in D.C. Who, uh, who sells weed, who ends up in the, uh, you know, in the criminal justice system and in prison there, and, um, and while in prison finds his voice and, um, and, and tries to explore what the meaning of, of freedom is. Uh, in short, it's that. Uh, in long, <laughs> it's, it's many things, but it's also the occasion uh, where I met Mamalu, um, who was in the juvenile ward at the time uh, Slam was shot by Mark Levin, uh, who's here, the director is here. Um, and, um, and we, um, we shot the film with, with the majority of the crew is, are actual, were actual prisoners mm -hmm. in, in DC jail at the time. And so when we ventured into the, um, the juvenile ward, um, I heard a kid rapping. And uh, let me just say that uh, I heard this young man rapping at the time and turned to Mark and was like, um, yo, we have to <laughs> find a way. And, um, and the next day we found a way, Absolutely. actually. And, um, but that's when we met and we knew Mama Lou's story and, uh, and his sentence then. Um, and so this moment is unexpected. Ashe. Wow. So, Mamalu, um, you were 17 years old, right, at the time? Yes, um, what was that experience like to all of a sudden being involved in this artist, artistic collaboration and, and with such great talent? And, and what, what was that experience like for you? So initially, I was 16 when I was incarcerated uh, for a homicide. <clears throat> I always used that form of art to express my pain and my trauma. So when I met Saul, uh, it was like, it gave me more of a purpose, right? Uh, and it gave me hope that I could see myself one day uh, becoming more than what society had labeled me uh, as a menace or a super predator. And it was just an epic experience, and it led me to hold on to my dreams no matter what. Awesome. 
Um, so what, where were you at in your career at that time? Because spoken word and slam poetry wasn't really, people weren't really aware of it back then. I was a part of the, the local scene in New York City at the time. Um, by the time we shot Slam, I had already participated in the, um, the International uh, Slam Festival, which uh, in 96 had been in Portland, Oregon. And I went as part of the New Yorican team. Um, at that time, the, the host at the New Yorican was, was Bob Holman, um, who's here also, mm -hmm. and um, who means so much to to the slam poetry movement. Um, and so I was, I was uh, you know, uh, things were happening locally, but I was in grad school for acting. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated in 97, that May, and that July we shot slam. Um, and so maybe previous to graduating, like in October or whatever, I had met Mark Levin. Um, they asked me to, um, to, to help write uh, the, the film with them, and, and I agreed, and, and so I was, I was at the beginnings of, of my career, but I had, uh, I had taken the step of discovering poetry, and, uh, and the poetry scene in New York was extremely vibrant, mm -hmm. um, probably as vibrant as like a skateboarding scene in Venice, California in whatever year that was, you know right. what I'm saying, like it was, it was kind of the shit. Right. Um, <laughs> there were amazing poets at the time who now, whose names I can now say, and you'll know them maybe as rappers or as singers, um, but who were, we were exploring uh, where we could take language, um, uh, the ideas that we had inherited from our parents who had been part of the black liberation and civil rights movements, uh, connected to, for some of us, hip hop, for some of us, for others of us, uh, other forms of music or literary uh, references. Um, either way, we were carrying on the tradition of the, the greats like the Bob Holmans and the Allen Ginsbergs and the Nikki Giovannis and, 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 and all of those. We felt that connection, but we also felt that through hip hop, maybe the ears of the youth were a bit more primed for poetry than a previous generation, right. um, just because they had already spent time dissecting lyrics. So for some of us, it was like, you know what? Take the beat away. I think this will work. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. But these guys, so I, I remember being on, on, out in the yard, and we had a little freestyle session in the yard and I listened to them, and then uh, maybe Mark was like, so, come on, come on. And, uh, and so I said a little something, and I realized that, you know, for those who were, who were you know, on the block like that, who were, who were, who were locked up, there, there was perhaps an eagerness to hear new voices, other lyrics. I heard someone kind of recite verbatim a two-minute rap that I had just said back at me, like, yo, he said, blah, 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 blah. I was, and I was like, okay, yeah. <laughs> these cats are hungry for, for, for lyrics, and it was exciting, you know, because we, we all had the same kind of lyrical references. Right. Um, I remember every cell had, had, like, practically every cell had an image of, like, Tupac, yeah. you know, had some, like, beads, oranges in the window. Yeah. You, you know, like, there'd be, like, these makeshift altars set up to, like... Uh, Heroes, rap gods, Aaliyah, all this stuff. I would see them, you know, like it was, uh, it was uh, a, a, a beautiful moment. But yeah, I was at the beginning of my career. Wow. So, <laughs> Mama Lou, after lightning striking and being able to like experience interacting with, with, uh, with Saul, were you able to pursue your art in your situation? Like, did you double down and, and embrace um, poetry, spoken word, and what, what you were, you know, feeling at the time? So, after the movie, I was sent to Lawton, Lawton Penitentiary, Lawton Prison. And then, within a few months, I was shipped to New Mexico. And uh, I stayed writing but at the same time, I wasn't really inspired to share my, my lyrics with uh, people that was incarcerated with me mm -hmm. because in prison is very volatile. Things could change from you being the friend to the next minute you being the enemy. So uh, 
I was very secluded and for lack of better terms, I, I painted the window black. I wasn't able to see out the window. You know, I wasn't able to see the sun. Um, but at, at some point, I had an epiphany and that's what kind of gave me the audacity to start back writing, to start back, um, you know, creating, you know, to start writing my book, mm. my journey home. And um, yeah, and I stuck with it ever since. Wow. So in, in light of this incredible journey that you've been on, what do you tell young people who have a limited view of their situation and the opportunities that they might be able to achieve in their life? So the first thing that I tell young people and all people, uh, you have to be able to see a greatness in humanity in spite of humanity. You have to be able to be an analytical thinker, be able to be patient and not rush for immediate gratification. Think more about your consequence than you do your decision because it's the consequence that's gonna stay with you longer than the decision you make. Um, and, and, and that's my life, that's my purpose. Uh, my dad wrote something in his thesis and he said that obligations are what others place on you. Duty is what you place on yourself. So, uh, and I know I'm getting away from the question, but right. the last thing is that, you know, I know that that's my duty, you know, to give back to humanity because uh, when I took a life, a part of my life was taken as well mm -hmm. and I can never repay that, but I can give back life in everything that I do, in my culture, in my book, in my music, in my visual art, in my design, which is, uh, the name of it is Royal, but it's an acronym for raising our youth as leaders. Mm -hmm. So um, that's my message to the young people. That's my message to all people because young and old, that's, you know, that's kind of rel relative. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so uh, one, one final question to you, Sal. You know, 25 years on, slam, still is very relevant to, to, you know, our exploration of the criminal justice reform system and the transformative power of art. Um, you know, did, did that film sort of set you on a path that, that you still, you know, abide by today? Uh, in many ways, yes, but we, we were on a path that, that, that Mark Levin kind of chronicled. We were on that path. We are on that path. We've been on that path. Right. Um, and we know that it's a, a long haul. Um, it's true that in the film, that focus on the criminal justice system, which if you know Mark Levin's oeuvre, you know his, it, what he's focused on in his work. He's had that focus. Um, same thing with one of our producers, Richard Stratton, who was one of the founders of High Times, like, because of course we also were looking at marijuana legalization and all that in SLAM as well. Right. Um, so many things have come to pass uh, since, since that film you know, was made, but we were very clear on the fact that we were rooted in something that was uh, not exactly temporal. Mm -hmm. you know? um, we, we, you know, there's that saying, like, they thought they had buried us, they didn't know that we were seeds, um, but, but we were operating as, as, as seeds. We were planting seeds in that film and which was evident through um, you know the spoken word movement right. and, and 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 how you know we, we realized in that in in that in that community um, there was a realization that if we could sharpen and, and heighten our communication with each, with each other it would have eventual f effects on society right. and you know now the things that we talked about uh, in in private whether that was white supremacy white supremacy or intersectionality or all of these things, when we mention them now, these are not terms that belong simply to poetry readings in academia. They belong to the people, and the poet's job is to return those ideas to the people right. as seeds so that they can blossom into something that really changes 
you know, lives and moments and reality. Right. And there's so much work to do, um, but we believe in the power of art. And, um, and, and it's, um, as we believe in the power of activism, we believe in everybody playing their role, you know, uh, the lawyers and, and, and scholars that helped, you know, re-argue your case to get you out. All, we believe in all of those movements. My mother, who's celebrating her 82nd birthday, is here. Um, her birthday is tomorrow, um, but she's a retired school teacher, right? And we believe in teachers. Right? Yeah. Um, so the poetry world was where all these things combined and slam captured so much, you know, it caught Sonia and Lisa as teachers in the prison. We, we, we wanted to, you know, point out that we need education behind bars. We need all of these things, you know, and, and at the end of the day, uh, you know, truly in spirit, we are abolitionists. You know, we want to see the, an end, you know, to the criminal justice system and the prison industrial complex as we know it. Um, and so SLAM is a part of that fight. Yeah. And so obviously there's a lot more to be done, um, but we're so grateful to, to be here, you know, 25 years past that, Wonderful. that month. Well, we, we are so grateful that you guys are here and we'd love to experience the power of your art. So we're gonna hand it over to you, transition and sure. let you do your thing. Yeah. So I know you have another special yeah, like guest that. you want to bring yeah, out. Yeah, exactly, because we want to honor um, you know, the local poets as well. And so we, we've asked the local poet, Jose Soto, to, to share a poem with us as well. So and, uh, I just want to give a special shout out to my wife, who is currently with my son, my one-year-old, uh, who has been making himself known. She's doing the hard work, and I get to do a poem for y'all. So thank you. <clears throat> Para mis venezolanos. February 12, 2014. Thousands of Venezuelan students my age march on the streets of our home to protest the police department that attempted to sexually assault one of our classmates. They march to change the government that has made our home unrecognizable. Two years later and thousands of miles away, I'm staring at a college senior who's sitting under a banner that screams, socialism for everyone. But her fingers are wrapped around the biography of Hugo Chavez and she tells me how this dictator, this boogeyman to my cousins, this nightmare to my grandmother is the savior we as citizens need. We don't break eye contact as her lips wrap around the word freedom. So I walk up to her. I put on the same pride all my family members now wear to get the fuck up out of bed every morning. And I open my mouth. But there's just too much to say. February 12, 2015. My parents and I welcome my uncle and his family to the United States. They are all carrying empty suitcases and the burden of saving the embers of a past that no longer exists. Two days later, I drive my uncle to a Walmart. He keeps telling me stories about when his neighborhood used to look a lot like mine. To this day, I don't know if he was nostalgic or mourning. Two months later, Fox News does a segment of a McDonald's burning behind a sea of flaming palm trees. They call it Baltimore. Before the broadcast is over, the news anchor apologizes, admits the photo they had just shown had been of the Venezuelan riots one year prior. Is there a word for when your home becomes disaster stock footage? Can you put that in a frame? Hang it around your house, above the fireplace, behind a locked door. Could you lose the key on purpose? Can you write me a dictionary just on the feeling of loss? Have it describe every single life that gets lost in translation. Can you translate a man crying in Spanish in the middle of a Walmart to finally understand how gross it is to live in excess? What language must we die in to be worthy of a ribbon? A hashtag finally become a tragedy worthy of recognizing. November 6th, 2016, thousands of American students my age march on the streets of their home to protest a newly elected boogeyman accused of sexual assault. I know what it is like to experience trauma and call it deja vu, to stand in the middle of an unfolding story. 
having already lived the epilogue. Thank you, Jose, for that wonderful poem. Uh, now I want to bring up once again uh, my brother Mamalu, and, and this is, uh, as you know, his being here is a miracle, and, and it's just a, a, such a, a beautiful moment that, that I'm thankful that we all get to share together and experience. Um, today is our first time seeing each other uh, since 1997 when we shot Slam. And, um, and I'm just happy to share that moment with all of you and happy to share him. And thank you for sharing yourself with us. Everybody, Mamalu Stewart. Moment of silence for the ancestors. Ashe, Ashe mean may the ancestors be pleased. Okay, so what you about to see, it's a short docu, but everything is real. The footage, you can roll it out now, the video. TV star Kim Kardashian helped win his release from prison. Mama Liz Stewart's story of redemption after serving time for murder continues in the DC The day that beauty met the up. beast was sentenced in prison to be deceased. Did 23 now and I'm back in the streets cause beauty helped the beast. I told her I pay it back to the streets. That's the least if ever I am released. When beauty met the beast, the leather made better for my release. I walked in that court. And my father was Kirk and I knew it would worsen Infidelity led to burdens and Satan was lurking Wrestler forgot about our future and that is for certain Me and my sister suffer stupid because of the service My father was murdered, my mother got the guilty verdict Her and her boyfriend killed my father, he didn't deserve it A man has been murdered Police say they were called to 211 Elm Street Northwest around 3 a.m. Gloria Stewart and Harrison were lovers, and that Mrs. Stewart allegedly paid Harrison $250 to kill her husband. It was Thanksgiving, he was chilling, knocked out of the bourbon. I had a dream he was being murdered, I think I heard it. I was a student, rooted, my father reaches purpose. I hated moms because she broke the bond of my beloved. That was a husband, it was something I could never stomach. It made me stubborn, my family was all I ever wanted. Instead, I was confronted, trauma made sure growth was stunning. Uncle was money hungry like a fox, his chump was cunning. Beat me into a boat, thought that this shit was just funny. My father was a professor, this nigga was a dummy. Was sentenced in prison to be deceased. Did 23 now, and I'm back in the streets. Cause beauty helped the beast. I told her I'd pay it back to the streets. That's the least, if ever I am released. When beauty met the beast, the leather made better for my release. I walked in that court, grown, looking sweet. When beauty helped the beast, yeah. When beauty helped the beast, yeah. So I believe that Mama Lou deserves that same freedom. I am definitely gonna reach out to his lawyer and write a letter in favor of his release. I'm forever indebted, blessed that his passion embedded. Yes, I committed the tragic, made the transition from savage. Him recognizing what happened, beauty went right in the action. Yeah, I'm ecstatic, invested, throw that out, bow to a casket. Rise from the trenches, it's habit. She live in the Calabasas, come from the money and status. Sweet as the honey, your ass is there in the face of the masses. Tell them my case is a classic. Know that her face above average, lavish. Her mind is like magic, most of y'all. I'll see her for fashion only if you could imagine having her as a companion just for one second
black and pain vanish Causing more healing than damage Freedom, we gotta demand it Yes, we gon' win, so don't panic Yes, I can swim, no Titanic Love everything about her standards It's her ambition and man is called it proficient and candid The God is walking this planet Went through a lot just like Janet Maintained her heart for a vanish Someone I'll never outbandage She didn't leave me with stranded Beauty met the beast Was sentenced in prison to be deceased Did 23, now I'm back in the streets Cause beauty helped the beast I told her I'd pay it back to the streets That's the least, if ever I am released When beauty met the beast The leather made better for my release I walked in that court room looking sweet When beauty helped the beast Yeah When beauty helped the beast Yeah I made this song in a steam Kim Kardashian West, I'm forever grateful. May the ancestors bless you and be with you. Yeah, cold blooded queen, God walking this planet. Thank you. Okay, this song right here is called The King is Coming. Mama, we made it. They sentenced us to die in them cages. Instead, we kept our eyes on them pages by African sages. And just to think they came off the slave ship, but they ain't telling us the gift the ancestors came with, reigned with. The rituals, it made them infamous because they utilized spirituals to fight the enslavement. System demonized voodoo because they couldn't contain it. Then they strategized the way where they can ban it and stain it. So then they they gave us Jesus, kept our strength in the pulpit. And they watched our power leave us. They deceived us to forfeit. Assassinate our leaders, saying Jesus would save us. And he was European, so they play in the favors. Was disconnected from the spirit our father gave us. And now we in the trenches. We be lynching our neighbors. They sentenced us to prison, modern way to enslave us. Cage us for ages. God made us amazing. Everybody, repeat after me. We still rose. Though the system labeled us cold. We are still whole. Though a part of our souls was stole. We are still bold. Because our texture is made of gold. The truth must be exposed. We the people that God chose. May the ancestors be pleased. Ashe. One more time for Mama Lou Stewart. I'm just going to recite something uh, briefly um, for Mama Lou. Uh, I, I think I wrote this um, not long after I met you. Um, and so here we go. If I remember it. <laughs> Time is money, money is time, so I keep seven o'clock in the bank and gain interest in the hour of God. I'm saving to buy my freedom, God grant me wings, I'm to fly, not to fly. I soar to catch humans without wings, so I soar and find tickled in the feathers of my wings. Flying hysterically over land, numerically I am seven mountains higher than the valley of death, seven dimensions deeper than dimensions of breath. The fiery sun of my passions evaporates the love lakes of my soul, clouds my thoughts and rains you into existence as I take flight on bolts of wind, claiming chaos as my concubine and you as my me. I of the storm, ye of the sea, we of the moon, land of the free, what have I done to deserve this? Am I happy? 
Happiness is a mediocre standard for middle class existence. I see through smiles and smell truth in the distance. Beyond one dimensional smiles and laughter lies a hereafter where tears are collapsed. You'd have to do math to divide the smile by a tear times fear equals mere truth. That simply delves in the air. If that's the case, all I have to do is breathe and all else will follow. That's why drums are hollow. And I like drums. Drums are good, but I can't think straight. I like the attention span to meditate. My attention spans galaxies here and now are immense. Seconds are secular moments are mine. Self is illusion. Music's divine. News by the street. Strings of Jimmy's guitar, I swing. Purple haze pendulum, hypnotizing the part of I that never dies. Look into my eyes as the windows of the soldiers fried chicken, collars, and cornbread as cornmeal, flour, turkey, eggs, and oil is the stolen blood of the earth. Used to make cars when and kill the fish. Who me? I play scales. The scales of dead fish of oil slick seas. My sister blows wind through the hollows of fallen trees. And we are the echoes of eternity, echoes of eternity, echoes of eternity. Maybe you heard of us. We do rebirths, revolts, and resurrections. We threw basement parties in pyramids. I left my tag on the wall. The beach would echo off the stone and solidify into the form of light bulbs, destined light the heads of future generations. The reason up in the form of foam. Maybe you heard of us. If nothing, you must be trying to hear us, and in such case, we can't be heard. We remain in the darkness unseen. In the center of unpeeled bananas, we exist uncolored by perception, clothed to the naked eye. Five senses does not sense the fact of our existence. That's the only fact. In fact, there are no facts. Facts may have fact, and I'll telegram a hologram, a telephone to send a man and tell him he is done. Leave a message on a dance machine telling him there are none. God and I are one times moon times star times sun. The fact is me. You remember me? I slung amethyst rocks on Saturn block like I caught up by earthling cops. They wanted me for the army or whatever. Picture me, I swirl like the wind, tempting tomorrow to be today, tiptoeing the fine line between everything and everything else. I am simply Saturn swirling sevens through sooth, the soul living air of air and I, and and all else follows, reverberating the space inside of drum hollows, packaging bottles and shipped to tomorrow, then sold to the highest nigger. I swing from the tallest tree, lynched by the lowest branches of me, praying that my physical will set me free, because I'm afraid that all else is vanity. Mere language is profanity. I'd rather hum, have my soul tattooed to my tongue, and let the scriptures be sung in gibberish. As words be simple fish in my soul aquarium, and intellect can't swim, so I stop combing my mind so my thoughts could lock. I'm tired of trying to understand. Perceptions are mangled, made and Matter than not in any way, life is more than what meets the eye and eye. So elevate eye to the third, but even that shit seems absurd in your thoughts if you third isolated. No man is an island, but I often feel alone. So I find peace through. Om. Thank you. And thank you, ASCAP Music Cafe. Love to all the SLAM family. Amir, our editor, is here. So much of our SLAM team is here. We can't wait to see you on Sunday. Much love. Thank you.